Well, welcome to Halftime Live, presented by Fast Track Oil Change. Craig Kishan and Steve Novak here on the Fox Sports Wisconsin Facebook page. Toronto up 59-51 here at halftime of Game 1 of the Eastern Conference Finals. And, Steve, uh, maybe a little bit out of rhythm for the Bucks right now. Toronto seems to have a better, better rhythm and maybe a little more step in their giddy-up, if you will. Yeah, there's no question that Toronto seems to be getting some very good looks offensively and they really have Milwaukee struggling at on certain possessions to really get good looks they've done a great job of when Giannis brings the ball down the court they're putting two three guys in front of him like the Bucks and Giannis have seen many times throughout this season but they're doing a really good job of when there are scramble situations which basketball often ends up becoming they're doing a good job of scrambling and getting a guy on a guy so when Chris Middleton is driving the ball they're throwing a body in front of him as soon as he kicks it The defense for Toronto is scrambling and making it tough for Milwaukee to get a good look. They're getting the ball out of Giannis' hands after that initial penetration, and it seems like once they get into scramble mode, Milwaukee is struggling at times. Malcolm Brogdon did get going and made some big-time shots, but is struggling to find consistent looks. Brooke Lopez at times also has found his groove, been able to put the ball on the floor and score the ball. Typically this year, we've really seen him spot up and shoot and shoot long threes. But seeing you put the ball on the floor, I thought was good, along with Malcolm Brogdon getting going a little bit, I thought was a good sign. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, if you, if you get Giannis going a little bit more, obviously, in this case, keep those contributions from Brogdon off the bench and then get the rest of that bench who took this, uh, this bench mom mentality uh, through the Eastern Conference semifinals right now. And then I think getting Bledsoe going somehow offensively is, is going to be important to win this game in the second half. Absolutely. You know, the the bench in the second half, especially the third quarter, has been huge. There was game three against the Boston Celtics. George Hill scored eight straight points at 21 points total for that game. The game game after that, Pat Connaughton, eight straight points. Pat Connaughton had 15 points in that game. So those guys have come in in third quarters, have played well throughout the course of those games against Boston, but the third quarters came in, had a big impact. It really created the energy in games like this where at halftime the Bucs were close, for some reason, we're down two points. In this case, tonight, eight points down at half. Found, found a way to get that energy from those guys. Make some shots. Somebody come in, spread the floor. And we've seen the Bucks kind of find a group that really starts to play well together here in this third quarter. They've gotten a spark, and it's carried them all the way through. The Bucks have won eight out of nine playoff games coming into tonight. So they have absolutely had success. The one game that they didn't was against Boston, which I feel like was a similar game to what we've seen so far. The Bucks were missing some good looks. The Toronto Raptors have been shooting the ball well. So we're going to see how the second half goes, but the Bucks have done a good job of responding after poor first halves. The difference, though, of that Boston game one win was the fact that uh, there, there was a deficit that was almost insurmountable, and the Bucks came back at the end of that first, second quarter uh, to make it close, but then after that, the whole second half belonged to Boston. Right now, you don't get that sense that this game belongs to Toronto by any stretch of the imagination. So maybe a turn on here in the third quarter. The loose balls, too, that type of thing right now, the 50 50 situations, I, I think maybe is favoring the road team right now. Yeah, you have to give them credit right now. They did come out after the Bucks seemed hot. Giannis got to the rim a couple times, and the Bucks made some shots. All of a sudden, the Bucks were down 19 to 8. And you were like, hold on, I just watched the first couple minutes, thought the Bucks had this under control, looked away for a second, and Toronto kind of threw that second punch. So, look, they're on the road. Milwaukee understands they have home court advantage. They've talked about that is an important thing. You have got to take care of business at home. This is game one. Also in game two, if the Bucks can continue to make Pfizer for them a tough place to play for other teams, not let anybody come in here and win, having four games throughout this entire postseason, at home is a big deal. You cannot let one of these games slip. Toronto did come out. They've played great so far. Milwaukee, I, I like you said, I do think they're going to settle into kind of what that first half was. Toronto is not in control of this game. You see Milwaukee go on a few runs. You do want to see a guy like Bledsoe get a little bit, of, bit more of what he wants, get into that paint, not let them crowd him, find some open shooters, and those guys got to continue to knock those shots down. Yeah, I, I think right now the, the biggest surprise is the fact that, that getting into the paint has been incredibly difficult to find yeah. any success whatsoever. And then next thing you know, the shot clock's winding down, and you're trying to kick that ball back out, and it, it almost becomes too late on some of those possessions. For sure. Late in the shot clock, the Bucks definitely seemed like they were having to, having to jack up a shot that they did not want. Giannis is going to have the ball at the start of possessions. He is going to, especially when the Raptors miss, 
go down the heart of the paint. He's going to probe, try to see what he can get because the Bucks are very good in transition. If Giannis doesn't have something, he's got to have his wings running to the corners where he can kick out to his spot-up guys. Malcolm, is, it's fantastic to see that he is out there knocking down shots. His misses have been bad. You can tell that's a little bit of that. He's missed some time, and he's shooting off the backboard, but he has made shots. He has been one of the best players for the Bucks in the first half. I think that is a great sign, knowing that he did not start this game, but he will play starter minutes is a really good sign, a really good thing. They're going to need him to make shots late in games, maybe this game, definitely for the rest of the postseason. I expect Giannis to free himself up a little bit by finding his spots. Bud has done a great job of getting Giannis touches in different spots. When it's not working for Giannis down the middle, get it on the wing a little bit, catch it in the mid post, see what kind of other looks you can give that Toronto Raptors defense. All right, the Bucks now have their work cut out for them in the third quarter. They're down by eight here at halftime of the Eastern Conference Finals. Game one here in Milwaukee. Steve and I will be back after the game on Fox Sports Wisconsin Plus channel for a one-hour Bucks Live postgame special. So we invite you to click over and watch that as uh, we progress here this evening as the Bucks play on. Want to wrap this up? This has been Bucks Live Fast Track. Presented by Fast Track Oil Change.